everybody good morning this is Jean here um, from true love quilts for you I have a tutorial coming up just a little tutorial um, for a little gift for a little child um, that I had made a couple weeks ago actually um, so um, I'm sort of I I'd finished making and editing that video um, but it was sort of I sort of forgot about it um, so that was a couple weeks ago what I'm gonna be putting up um, uh, but this is just a little introduction to that introduction. Now, I wanted to clear something up because I got a very odd comment um, uh, from somebody who obviously was looking at my previous videos from years ago, years and years ago. I had made a, um, I, what, I, what happens is I can see the uh, comments from all of my videos on my master YouTube copy sheet. And this, this comment was very, uh, just to the to direct, um, I had been making a tutorial on a, a seasonal table runner, a seasonal table runner, and somebody said, oh, um, I, I guess you are not one of Jehovah's Witnesses since you're making a seasonal table runner. <laughs> and I thought, oh, what, a, what an odd comment to make, because as you know, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. My friends, my friend Jen and I are witnesses. We've been most of our life. My husband wasn't. My husband was Church of England um, in England, but he became, he studied with witnesses over 50 years ago. He became one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And as you know, I allude to that we do our ministry work um, on a Saturday and during the week. Um, but again, there's misconceptions of Jehovah's Witnesses. I know you have them. But the one, I thought this was very interesting that we, I was doing a seasonal table runner pertaining to quilting. And it reminded me of what I'm doing now, gifts for the gift giving season. Well, as you know, we don't celebrate Christmas or as I have said to you dozens of times before, we don't celebrate the traditional holidays. We celebrate everything else. We just don't celebrate the traditional holidays that most people do. Um, but as far as making, uh, uh, giving ideas for presents, well, why not? I'm a, I'm a quilter and that's what I do. And as far as me making a seasonal table runner, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting because we celebrate the seasons. Um, I, I, I believe I commented back like, in the autumn time there are harvest colors and pumpkins and gold and red leaves falling. So obviously my table runners or my tablecloths are gonna be geared to, to that. Not necessarily, we don't celebrate Halloween. Um, in, in the springtime, um, the, the, the crocuses and the daffodils are coming out and spring colors and beautiful, pretty pastel, grass green things coming to life. We don't celebrate Easter. Um, in the summertime, um, beachy, you know, beachy and uh, bright colors and things like that. Um, the, the sun and bright flowers, but say we don't celebrate the 4th of July. And, and coming up, um, there are like poinsettias and, and holly and snow, um, but we don't celebrate Christmas. But that doesn't, as a quilter, that doesn't, that doesn't um, uh, bother me to, to celebrate what creation and what Jehovah God has given us in the beautiful seasons. So I just thought that was odd and I wanted to, I wanted to um, clear that up if any of you thought, oh my word, you know, she's one of Jehovah's Witnesses and they don't celebrate anything. And we, uh, above all, creation, beautiful, beautiful. And I think it would be odd in, in, um, in March to, to, to make a table runner with pumpkins and, you know, falling leaves. I, I think you I think you people get that so anyway that was just something I thought that was interesting um, but I just thought I'd, I'd clear that up anyway the little next little tutorial is for a little roll-up bag um again I'm dressed different it was it was weeks ago before I was doing any of my things I'm still working on my Dresden plate quilt I'm quilting that I dialed my machine in pretty good um, if you've been following. So anyway, that's that. That's this morning. Um, I just wanted to clear that up and say hello to you. I hope you all have a happy and healthy week. It's the beginning of the week now. And um, yeah, we're trying to stay safe. So please, my YouTube family, please stay safe. All right, tutorial to follow. See ya. I've been making some things for um, gift giving season that's coming up for holiday season coming up. Um, just little small things that you can whip up. And this time what I have done is um, a little quiet toy or a little quiet uh, parcel that hopefully you could take your kids, uh, just a small like 
toddlers uh, to a doctor's office or somewhere where they need to be quiet. And what I've done is on the, um, uh, it looks like my uh, brush holder, my makeup brush holder. It's a little roll, that a little crayon pad roll. I had made this about four, five, six, seven tutorials back for makeup brushes, and that was vinyl lined. It's the same exact principle. But what I've done is I've included a little pad and 12 crayons. So I had gotten, as I show you, I'd gotten the um, crayons and, uh, no, I'd gotten the pads online, and then packs of 12 crayons, or a bigger pack. You can make quite a few of these with just a bit of scrap of fabric. Um, I th a, a, a fat quarter would do one, a, a little bit over a fat quarter um, for this one with the contrasting fabric. This one rolls up. Again, it just has the little pockets. It rolls up. And I have put on a, a um, tie, a, a ribbon, a, like a cording tie. Now, I when I was trying to figure out this little um, this is the tutorial I'm doing on. When I was trying to figure out how to sort of make this, um, very, very simple construction. I had made this one, and this was a sweet little one. Whoops, there's my pad. Um, I put the pad in the middle. I put the pad in the middle of this one, and I was trying to be clever and do it with a little bit of elastic. I didn't have elastic to hand. Um, it's somewhere here. I have to find it. So I just used, I just I took a, a, a um, a, a ponytail holder but a bit of elastic but it didn't work out because um, I I didn't quite know how to do that how I would fold it how I would fold this to get the elastic to go around so if you can figure that out but I thought well the next one I'll make I'll just do it with the cording and that worked out really well and I show you exactly where and how to put the cording on so this is my little tutorial um, with a little pad. I quite like it. Um, and again, just to make up, uh, make up real quick um, and really, oh, just a nice little, little present for little, for um, little kids to keep them quiet just for about two minutes, right? Um, and then once the pad is gone, if, uh, if you uh, get a few other little pads, and as I explained, you can make this any size. It's a very basic construction. It doesn't take, it doesn't take rocket science to make this. It's very simple. So if you had a bigger pad, um, or even if you had a sketch pad for a, a budding artist and you could put, um, um, not paintbrushes, but like um, colored pencils um, and something like that, or a coloring, a coloring, a coloring book, um, sort of you, you can step outside the box and think about little pads for perhaps a, a teenager um, or as I said, a budding artist. That would be nice, a little sketch pad and colored pencils or pens or markers. So you're not limited. And again, just rolls up really nicely into a nice little package. Somebody will say, oh, what is that? And then they open it up and they're like, oh, that's really cool. Thanks, Nana, for making it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this. It's a lovely, no, it's not a lovely day. It's a rainy day here, uh, but a nice gentle rain um, here in Pennsylvania. So I hope you're all keeping safe and healthy as much as possible um, during this unprecedented time um, of this horrible lockdown and pandemic. Um, we're, we're, we're all praying for each other that we get through this and keep sane, keep sane, right? Every day. So um, my thoughts and prayers are with you. The True Love family says hello and I hope you enjoy this. All right, see ya, bye. <laughs>
So here's a pack of um, 32. So, you know, you have a couple, you can make a couple of these with a small pack. And then, of course, you're going to be needing um, some little notepads. I did get these online because I plan on making a couple of these. So you got five for um, just a few dollars um, online. And this, this holds this size. This is like a three by five. You can make this holder larger um, according to whatever size your pad is. Um, it's a very basic, basic construction. It's basically two rectangles sewn together. Um, but for this size that I've made here, which I've, you, I, I like rolling it up to the size, a little bit bigger because of the bulk, to the size of my pad. So I roll it over once, twice, and then it, it rolls over to about that size, just slightly larger. And as you can see, actually with this one, I could, I could um, put a button on there. Um, or some kind of fastening there. Um, but I think I'm like, like I said, I like the cord going around it and tying. Um, so this is for this little, for this little project here. These are my uh, fabrics that I'm going to be using. Um, this is sort of like a little, um, little boys or um, little gender neutral. Um, I am, I've cut out of my outside fabric, which is this fabric here and in here, I have cut out two pieces, seven inches by 17 inches. All right, two pieces, seven inches by 17 inches, one, two. I've also cut one piece of my inner facing. Now I've been using this a lot. This is, um, this is a fusible fleece. I have been using this a lot, and I quite like this product, Heat and Bond, Fusible Iron-On, Fusible Interfacing, and Fusible Fleece. It is an interfacing, but it's a soft interfacing. And I have found that sometimes with some of the harder um, interfacings, the iron-on, sometimes they, you can, when you fuse them, they get a bit wrinkly on the outside, and I don't love that look. This product here, adds enough uh, stability and enough um, body to the product, the finished product here, without adding a terrible stiffness or a wrinkling. I, I quite like it. So that's the heat and bond. I've cut out one piece, seven inches by 17 inches. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse the nubbly side, which is the glue side, there's the fleece side. I'm gonna fuse that side to the wrong side of one of my outer pieces. I'm just going to fuse that on according to the manufacturer's instructions there. And then what I'm doing for my pocket, by all means you could do this all in one fabric, but I'm using the, uh, I'm using another fabric for my little pockets here, a contrasting. For this one I'm, I'm, I'm using this green and I've cut one piece for my pocket, again seven inches by 17 inches. Okay, so that's what we're going to be needing for our um, our little project here. Now, I'm going to go over and I'm going to fuse my interfacing onto this one piece of fabric. And after I do that, what I'm, I'm going to do, I'll put that over by my iron, I'm going to be folding this pocket. Very, very, very simple little project here. I'm just going to be folding that pocket in half. Okay? And then after I fuse this, I'm, this is directional, so it's going your way. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be laying my pocket, just be folded in half. There's a raw edge there and a raw edge down here and a raw edge over here. I'm going to just stitch that with a quarter inch seam right close to the edge all the way around, reinforcing it at this point here, reinforcing it quite well at that point there. So. I'm going to be doing that, and then what I'm going to do, um, I figure out which one do I like? Which color do I like? I think maybe I like the blue, actually. So what I've done here, what I will do here, is I will mark, as you can see, our little pad is going to go in the middle, right there, and I'm going to mark where my stitching lines are. Okay, as you can see on this one, I've marked my stitching lines so my pad fits right in there very nicely very neatly right alongside there and then i will mark where all my crayon pockets are going to be but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over fuse this and then sew on my pocket assembly sewing my pocket on to my interfaced 
um, outer fabric here. Needle down. I think it's very important that um, you reinforce at the top of our little pockets because the nature of the crayons taking up the um, taking up space will put some pressure on these pockets. So when I come to this end here, I'll be particularly, even though that will be in the seam, I'm going to reinforce that. Now I'm going to go over and I'm going to mark my where my pockets are going to be. I have finished, I have um, sewn my pocket on just around the three sides. Um, I just wanted to show, I just wanted to share this with you. This is the coolest thing. Um, a friend of ours um, whose mother had died, um, oh, about 15 years ago or so. Um, he's an elderly man who came, so his mother would be well, well over 100 years old. This was her um, sewing kit that apparently she just she just loved her sewing kit and he knew that um, I sewed so he bought his sewing kit to me uh, everything with his beloved mother's belongings still in it look at this talk about a, a vintage blast from the past awesome seam ripper and some bobbins obviously I don't know what machine they would fit but um old old spools of thread look at this 15 cents for a wooden spool of thread, right? But I was just going through it because I was looking at for something and it has all of these awesome, awesome goodies. Look, old fashioned braid here. Um, what is this one? A non-roll waistband. Isn't this cool? And um, this is, this looks like a fuse. Oh yeah, this looks like a fusible web. Yeah, actually, you can get that now. You can get that now. So there's that. Um, there's all these old-fashioned look, um, old-fashioned hooks and eyes. This is so cool. And a, um, a not, an, an iron-on seam binding, three yards for 29 cents. Oh, my word. Ah, that's old, right? And let me see what else. Um, I think that's to darn socks, right? Here's another one. This is a 15 cent. Oh, we're getting more expensive here. And then all of these lovely, all of these threads, which obviously... Um, actually, somebody had said, um, you know, threads can get, threads can rot, but I think if you, I, I wouldn't use these, obviously, threads have come a long way, but if you can pull something and it's not going to, oh no, see that, now that broke, so it, you would, you'd want to pull it, but a lot of times, I even heard Jenny Doan saying, if you can really pull a thread, um, even if it's been hanging around for a few years, then use it. But if it's going to break, obviously not. So these are very old. These are very old. But I wanted to share with you what I just found. Oh, excuse me. Thimbles. Look at that. So cool. What's this? Um, a spring, a new spring snap rule. What is this? It's a, oh, it's like a, oh, ha, look at that. Yeah, it's so cool. It's a tape measure. Like the inside of a metal tape measure, but I guess it's for, it's for, um, yeah, roll out and snap. Look at that. Snap end gently to make rigid. I've, I've made snap, um, iPad holders and, um, little cases using, using the, um, inside of tape measures. That's so cool. It actually comes that way. I've had to cut mine. Look, patches, obviously, um, we used to patch things. And, um, but this is what I wanted to share with you. These are some bobbins. This is what I wanted to share with you. I've never used this, and I was thinking, what in the world is it? It's Taylor's chalk, right? This is a piece of, it's almost like a soap. Maybe it's soap. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody can correct me on that. But it's, um, it's, oh, it feels like a soap. So what I thought, instead of using, I always use my Sharpies, right? <laughs> instead of using that, I was, I, I did it on a, um, a piece of, um, scrap here and it actually it feels like a soap so anyway that's that's by the by I'm going to use that to mark my um, my little holders here now as you can see I was looking at this as you can see on this one I put my pad in the middle okay now it doesn't matter where you put your pad because you could if you wanted to you could put your pad over here and I just come in about a good inch or so because to allow for the seam and the cording that I'm going to be putting on. But the point is you're going to be rolling. It's going to obviously be taken 
up and smaller but you're going to be rolling we're going to be rolling our pad's going to be about there because the seam's going to be here we're going to be rolling our little packet here so that the the um your tie you're going to go you're tying it around but it doesn't matter where really where you're going to put your um your pad so if uh, i might actually i think what i'm going to do for this one i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to make i'm going to put my pad here and then i'm going to be rolling this i'm going to be marking on my uh fabric here you can't maybe you can't see it but there's my little chalk isn't that awesome oh, i must tell chris that's so sweet now what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark at even intervals i'm going to mark where my crayons are going to go all right i won't bore you because this as you can see i marked about every inch or so all the way on two sides but on this one it's just going to be all the way along here so i can just fold my thing up so i'm going to mark my lines and then i'm going to stitch my lines and i'm going to be very careful that i'm going to reinforce i'm going to back stitch on these on the top pocket here on all my lines to make sure that when it's put in there there's a little bit of stress and strain on there and that won't be ripping out so that's what i'm going to go do now with my lovely piece of chalk isn't that awesome finishing up my making my pockets and as you can see i've really reinforced this little edge here so when there's um wear and tear for the little crayons to go in. It's not going to rip out um, with little with, with little hands pulling it. So what I'm doing is I'm just starting. This is my um I can see my little marking with my little chalk, and I'm going back about three or four times, and then straight down. By all means, if you want to mark this, I had made my uh, makeup brush. I explained in the beginning my makeup brush holder. This is the exact same principle. So there's that one. And then I don't have to pull the threads up because they're they're all on the back side. And I'll trim off those threads. I'm just going to go right there, reinforce this. This is where my pad is going. And I'm going to go right down and off. There we go. There we go. Putting on my cording. Um, whatever you're using a little rope or elastic whatever you want to use um, I got a yard of this cording and um, it's probably a little bit too much but um, I err on the caution I err, err on the bigger side I'm just going to cut that in half right there and I will I will knot it you could always put pretty beads on there knotting it but where, where you want to put I'm going to keep these two together you're got I want to be I want to roll my roll from this end with my pad I'm going to roll it from here over to here it's going to be a bit bulky so I want my I want my cording to, to come out of this side so when it's tucked in that seam one goes one way one goes the other way and then we can tie it on this side here so that's about right actually a yard I've cut it in half so that's 18 inches so again it's opposite the end that you're going to be rolling okay I've had the I have the ends together now I'm just going to put it in the middle here where my pocket starts right there I'm just going to I'll, I'll finish these ends off later but what I'm going to do oh, there's my phone oh, excuse me um, I'm just going to it's just cording I'm just going to put this on very very tightly just above that pocket area very very tightly so when it, it, it's when it's pulled there's no it's there's you're real that's really not going to come off absolutely not going to come off so now what we're going to do is this is all finished what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other let me get it here I'm going to get the other half and I'm going to put the pretty side to the pretty side okay I'm just gonna match that up by all means if you want to um, if you want to clip it or pin it it you, we've cut it the exact size I'm very aware that my cording is tucked right inside here I'm not going to catch it in the seam in fact what I'll do is I'll put it I'll put the ends right in that pocket there just pull it along so I'm uh, nice and flat 
so it's not down there not in the seam because I'm going to be stitching around so I'm going to put the pretty side to the pretty side oh, all these threads <laughs> and then cut it exactly the same width I'm going to be leaving about a five inch opening here okay so what I'm going to do is making sure my pattern both are going the, the same way this is a directional print here I'm going to go to the bottom of my little package here right here I'm going to be leaving an opening so we can turn it inside out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about five inches away off having my fabric this way as you can see now I'm going to be doing a little bit a quarter inch seam or a little bit more and I'm going to go I'm going to reinforce it right there I'm going to do a stitch this way and if, again I've, I've done this a million times this is how I do an opening so there's no stress I'm going to leave my needle down and I'm going to turn press a foot up making sure my cording is out of the way and I'm going to stitch along a quarter of an inch or so to the end now we've already stitched our pockets on you want to make sure that you cover that stitching so it might be a little bit more than a quarter of an inch needle down and turn okay and then I'm going to go all the way around I'm going to needle down all the way around and all the way around to this end here here's our opening and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to come along there needle down and then I'm going to go off there so we have a nice secured opening as you can see I've stitched I've left my opening here I've stitched all the way around and I've actually just sort of reinforced the corners here um, just a, with a few stitches I'm going to be cutting off the corners here clipping clipping the bulk away from the corners making sure you don't cut the seams and now I'm going to turn this inside out and with the with the interfacing on you can tell it's really a nice fairly little substantial little package here but I know it's not going to get all wrinkled when I um, when it's when, when it's being used because of this product which I quite like so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my chopstick which I have here I take my chopstick and I'm going to pull this all the way out now I've when I've done my cording I've really I've go, gone over that quite a few bits quite a few bits of time so my cords are not going to fall off so I'm just going to continue with my chopstick poking out these corners here I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm going to press this really nice making sure my seams are really showing no no seam is showing the back's not showing on the front the front's not showing on the back and then I'm going to come back to my machine and as I just want to show you oops after this is nice and pressed there's our little there's our little uh, package here we have this opening right there okay we have that opening there and as you can see there's a stop I've just it, it's a there's a stop I get some of these threads away and it just turns in beautifully it just turns in beautifully like that just go over and press it there's no stress on these areas here where we've turned it which sometimes when you're pulling and you're um, um, turning something inside out there can be stress on those seams there there's no stress whatsoever so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and iron get rid of all these little uh, pieces of threads here make it really nice and flat and then I'm going to top stitch along this whole edge here and then we're going to be finished um, and that will close up that opening right there that will just close up that opening when I top stitch it don't have to worry about hand stitching anything my top stitching will close that up beautifully so I'm just top stitching all around the edge a little less than a quarter of an inch this just gives a nice finished edge nice finished stitching I've already done I've already done the the um, opening that's closed beautifully right there wouldn't know it was there and I have put the I, ha, I did do the interfacing so that it's in the seam but that gives a and so it's a little bit thick needle down 
I'm just going to come and finish this. Um, that gives a nice little, a nice um, s little solid edge to our little case here. So it's not, it's not flimsy. As you can see, my cords are out now, ready to be roll the whole thing up, and they really have been stitched on well. Oops, my my thread came out. <laughs> so I'll just finish up. Uh, I'll thread my machine, and I'll just finish up down to this point, reinforcing right there, and our little holder is done. So my lovely little crayon holder, pad holder, is done. Um, I'll, I'll knot these, I'll put a little bead on them, um, I'm not sure, quite sure, but my crayons are on here. This holds 12, this size holds 12 crayons, so you can get 12 packs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it over to me. I'm going to be folding it like this, nicely. And it goes just like that, makes a nice, neat, tidy little package there. I'm going to bring one of the ties around this way. The other tie goes that way. It meets, and then we can tie right there. That's, that meets, or however you want to secure it. If by all means, by all means you want to do a, an elastic, you can. Uh, I, I, my, my fingers, my, I'm all thumbs here. <laughs> I can't tie. So you get the idea. I've tied it three, I, I've put that around three times. I didn't need to do that. But there you go. There's a nice, lovely, neat, tidy little package, little present for somebody. They're like, oh, what is that? So I do hope you enjoy that little tutorial, um, a little gift for somebody um, for, or for little kids. Um, everything is enclosed very nice and neatly, so it can be just tossed in the bottom of a bag. And you have your crayons there, and it's nice with a little pad little busy toy. So I hope you enjoy this folks and again thank you so much for following. Love it. All right see ya.